Hello everyone, this is Lee, and we are on a nice Sunday drive in Germany on a kind of a gray, cold, rainy November day, so it's not so beautiful. So out here driving on the uh, wonderful German Autobahn, and I uh, thought I would talk a little bit about driving in Germany versus driving in the United States, maybe compare and contrast, talk about pros and cons of both places. Um, so a big um, the thought of most Americans when they think about driving in Germany is that, oh, I can't wait to get there and get on the Autobahn, uh, no speed limits, drive anywhere you want to with no speed limit as fast as you want to go all around the country and um, you know you get from A to B super super fast well that is not entirely true right so there are places on the Autobahn that have no speed limits and sometimes it is it's really fantastic it can be really great if you get on one of those stretches there's no speed limit we can find a time when there's not much traffic and you can just put the hammer down and you can fly and uh, it can be really really nice sometimes but there are also lots of times where there are speed limits the Audubon does have speed limits um, for example in obviously in, in urban areas where high population lots of traffic speed limit um, tends to go down uh, tends to go down lower uh, also and the bane of my existence in driving in Germany um, the construction sites the Baustelle and it seems like they are everywhere and sometimes it seems like you can't drive more than two or three kilometers without running into another construction site and so um, the lanes get smaller everything compresses down the speed limit goes down and uh, it can be very very um, stressful and very um, uh, you know uh, frustrating to drive in those situations um, so there's that and um, also in tunnels for some reason any tunnel you get to if you're on the Autobahn maybe you're driving somewhere really smooth and there's no speed limit and you may be going at a you know we in Americans we would say 100 miles per hour uh, around 160 kilometers per hour um, you know 120 miles per hour 180 kilometers per hour um, so you may be going really fast and then all of a sudden you hit this tunnel and for really no reason the the speed limit just goes down to 80 kilometers per hour which is approximately 48 50 miles per hour and so you have to slow down you go through the tunnel now I get it I'm sure there's a safety reason for that um, you know they don't want people driving too fast through the tunnels you know a lot of bad things can happen um, but some of it seems a bit excessive and then you really have to watch and if you don't slow down they have these these cameras um, the blitzers um, they'll take your picture if you're driving too fast if you're breaking the speed limit and then a few weeks later you'll get a nice letter in the mail saying hey um, you were driving 120 kilometers per hour and then 80 kilometer per hour zone and you get a nice ticket right so there's that lots of tickets now what's nice about driving in Germany other than the times when you do hit a nice stretch of Audubon where there's not much traffic and there's no speed limit um, German drivers tend to uh, know the rules of the road and they tend to follow them very well so slow vehicles stay in the right lane you only get in the left lane to pass um, they know um, who has the right of way and they're very good at following the rules so that makes traffic for the most part flow pretty smoothly now Americans on the other hand we don't really know the rules or if we know the rules we just don't follow them and, and we get away with it to a certain extent in the United States in North America because there's just not as much traffic right so there's not as much traffic so you can kind of ignore some of the rules uh, but every time I go back to the United States and I drive on the freeway I get really really frustrated and all of you who don't know the rules and you might be driving really slow over the left-hand lane and so it's um, it's problematic 
if the United States had the uh, volume of traffic on the roads that Germany does, uh, the way we drive, I think it would be very, very problematic. Um, yeah, so Germans know the rules. Um, you know, there's nice places with no speed limit. The roads tend to be in very good condition. So that kind of, uh, you know, you, you, got, you can't have it both ways. You got to have roads in good condition and you also have to have road construction, right? So um, sometimes I think their road construction is a bit excessive. Sometimes it seems like they repair roads that don't even need to be repaired yet, but there you have it. The roads tend to be in very, very good, good shape. Now, the nice thing about driving in the United States, I kind of alluded to this already, is that we just don't have the volume of traffic. So you can, you know, you can get on the highway and you can drive for miles and miles sometimes, and you may not see another car, depending on where you're at. And a lot of my European friends who have been to North America, that's one of the things they always comment on, is like, man, it's so nice driving in, in North America because there's no traffic on the roads, right? So they really like that. You know, they like driving across uh, Texas, across the Western United States, you know, miles and miles and miles of, of nice highway with uh, not much traffic. All right, so here we are driving through a nice stretch of Audubon on this gray, a little rainy November day. And one thing you might notice, now this is a, this is a very nice piece here because um, there's not a lot of traffic. And I'll show you over here, if you look on the other side, there are a lot of trucks stopped over there. And that is because in Germany on Sunday, trucks are not allowed to drive on the Autobahn. So Sunday could be a very nice day to drive. Uh, so if you're out and about um, and you want to take a little drive on the weekend, sometimes Sunday can be very, very nice. Now, the bad thing about driving on Sunday is if it's a school holiday, everybody else is driving too. So even though there aren't any trucks on the road, sometimes Sundays can just be absolutely horrendous for traffic here in Germany. Yeah, so I talked about some of the advantages of driving in the United States. Um, you know, talked about the lack of traffic uh, or the reduced amount of traffic, the re reduced volume. Another thing, a couple of other things that's nice are the roads tend to be bigger, they're wider, um, there's more shoulders on the road. So, for example, sometimes here in Germany, there's no shoulder. So, um, if you have to pull over, it can be really challenging. The lanes get really narrow, especially in those road construction areas. The lanes can get really narrow. So, if you have a wide vehicle, you know, most Europeans tend to, um, you know, drive fairly small cars, certainly not as big as we have in the United States. So, if you have a bigger vehicle, it can be really challenging navigating these uh, small lanes. And, uh, of course, through the old villages, um, some of these roads just weave through old uh, medieval buildings, so that could be difficult as well. Parking can be very challenging in Germany and in Europe in general. Parking spots are much smaller, much more crammed in. They can be so, and that's nice in the United States uh, or North America in general to have big parking spots and it's much easier to park your car. So. I know a lot of people just want to come to Germany, hit the Autobahn, and drive as fast as they can all the time. And there are places you can do that, but it is certainly not everywhere. And I would say on average, if you're going on a road trip, and let's say you're driving 300 miles, um, and you're gonna do most of that on the German Autobahn, even though a large part of that may have no speed limit, most of the time, it's gonna take you longer to drive, take you more time to drive 300 miles in Germany uh, than it would in the United States, simply because of the road construction, the reduced speed limits, and the amount of volume of traffic on the roads, right? So those are some of the differences, some of the pros and cons, and hope you enjoyed this video, learned something from it. Uh, give us a thumbs up, follow us, and uh, we'll try to give you uh, more great information about life in Europe and uh, life in Germany. Thanks.